2024 300 XCW can be as fast as an XC. Here to here, and then here to here. Okay, so I got us on an even number. We're just reusing our coolant that was stocked. And that seems to be the same on both of them. Started the first thread there, or I guess from the inside out, it'd be the last thread. Okay, we're gonna swap out the dome on this bike, this XCW, to an XC or SX dome. Very simple, you can see it actually says 300 right there, SX dome. So it's a higher compression stock. You'll still be able to run pump gas with this setup and it's gonna add compression to the bike. We're gonna give you some tips on it. We've already had the bike on the dyno with Jamie at Twisted and have uh, changed the mapping um, with the stock ECU that he changed and it's pretty dang good so far. Okay, we got it uh, all ready to take the head off. So we drained the coolant, we took the skid plate off to do so. Remove this hose right here just for ease. You could take one side out and it has the little heat uh, temp sensor there. So we took that off. Um, now we're ready to take the head off. We did disconnect the battery. Whenever we're working on, especially electric start bike where you can easily bump it, it's nice just to disconnect it. Also, the computer brain won't know that you're working on it. So let's just disconnect that while we're working. It's already loose, so it's gonna pop off like that. And this is just the outer part of the head now because now it has a removable dome. And I think if we were stuck here too much, we could put the spark plug in the hole and kind of lift up on it. But it felt like it was glued in a little bit, uh, you know, at the O-ring there. Okay, here are the two domes. This is the SX one. This is the XCW. And measuring them, it's about two millimeters the step from here to here, you know, kind of determining that squish area right here. And that seems to be the same on both of them. So this squish is, from what we can tell, the same. The only difference is this volume right here. You can see this looks much deeper. And this is this one has higher compression because this is gonna hold less volume than this one will. And we'll go measure it, show you a little trick on how to tell the difference in volume. Okay, here's the 300SX head, check this out. You got the part number right here. And we've been able to make up a little deal on some glass with some grease on the dome. And we're gonna compare this dome, the volume, just for kicks and giggles, to see how much more, we've gone to the, just to the, the start of the first thread there, or I guess from the inside out, it'd be the last thread going in. And see, we, we just filled it up with, we just used uh, some Windex mainly because it's got some blue, it's watered down, so it's light blue. And we just measured it and we have put in 30 cc's exactly to get to that point with the smaller 300 SX dome. So here's our uh, XCW one. And if this was a full size head without the dome, it's a lot easier to do this than just the dome. And we're going to be able to, now we have grease on here, we're going to put it on this piece of glass. We took this off of Spencer's, uh, you know, first birthday picture that was in the hall. We needed a piece of glass and that was more important. Worth it. Okay. Now let's flip it over and you can see that it's sealed up How good. it seals up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's like perfect seal right there, right? Awesome. Okay. So now let's drop in some fluid. Okay. So I got us on an even number. And then... Uh, I used 50 cc's. Look right, right there at the, the bottom of them. Almost there. You need a little bit more. Tiny bit more. Oh, yeah. I'm going to say we're at... Almost 40, right? Is that the well, 10? Oh, we start at 50. Yeah. So you go 10, 20, 30, 35. 35. 30, 35 to 34 range. So about uh, 6 cc's more is all. Of mixture? Of Well, 6 cc's of volume. Yeah. So... Let's look at it from under here. You can see and right at the bottom thread there. It's pretty good. Yeah, so I'd say five cc's of volume. Now, what does that mean? We got no idea. Other than this one has less compression. And so with an engine builder, and we'll be setting it up, and that's why the SX one has more hit, uh, that that bike then has more you know, power, that feel, that response right away, and better power. So we're gonna see how that goes. Okay, so if you just heard that, and now I'm wearing different clothes because it's like a week and a half later, right, Spence? Yeah, you're wearing your drop, which <laughs> it didn't, wasn't out at that time. Okay, so here's the stock dome. And what they did is they put this little step right here. 
and I was so mad when it didn't fit. So KTM, in their wisdom, decided to hose us. So you couldn't just throw this, this SX dome in like I wanted. They didn't have this step right here. So I sent this step to TMR, Tom Morgan. We could have cut it here, but I sent it to him because I wanted him to double check that everything was this, the same, and it is. He checked everything, and it just needed a little step cut right here. Now, so to avoid that, you could just send him your 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 dome you could you'd be down a week or two you could send, take your dome out send it to him and he would recut it like this so now it goes right into place so what was happening before when i said oop it was not fitting in right here so there's an o-ring here o-ring here now it's ready to assemble you don't want to forget this o-ring right here as well now the outside of the the head will just fit right on just like that um spin it to front there you go there's a little they have a little mark say front arrow okay and i think natural assumption is this is always here or the back so they got that nice thing front front Boom. now we'll be able to line up so we'll get we'll get everything started okay so now we're torquing the heads bolts here we're going to double check the torque spec and spencer's going to show you how we do that okay we're at the ktm manuals and we're able to easily go find the torque spec which is 27 newton meters or 19.9 which I rounded up to 20 because i um, American. So Spencer's gonna show you how you get to this screen, which is pretty easy if you kind of pay attention. So, uh, so we're on page. Our, you can go to our Google Doc first, and then we have a link to this ktm.com forward slash manuals or whatever. Yeah. And it brings you to this page. And then on this page, let's say I have a 2024 350, like 350 XCF. XCF right here. Right there. Uh, 2024 350 XCF, and I search and it, then right here, it's gonna bring up all the languages and obviously English and it downloads it and then you can open it up and it'll say even, so if you open it up, it'll open the document on the front page of all the KTM manuals, it says all the bikes that it's for. So like all the bikes that it would be also for. So it's for yeah. an SXF, an XCF and an XCF factory edition. But for this, um, like for example, this 300 we're working on, it's for a bunch of bikes. It's for all yeah. of these bikes, right? So maybe you, find a different manual but if you look at the front page you'll find what it could be for show them how we found those torque specs though because it was a little bit of a chore we, we you have the to general... you have to go to the first thing and just kind of keep on going down it's called the table of contents. in the table of contents and then technical specifications and then where was it engineering tightening torques page 151 and then, and you, then you can just drag you can just drag Obviously, all this is down. much easier i think on a computer or ipad than on your phone because the phone be, would be a nightmare uh, yeah it'd be really small it'd be really difficult so hopefully you still have you haven't thrown your computers away and not just stuck on your phone <laughs> and you go down to page 151 and you get right here and they're organized in kind of size of bolts so it goes you know six eight <clears> tens and we got 14 those, 18 yeah so that's how you can kind of easily find it and they call it a screw even though it's really not a, it's a bolt but it says cylinder head eight m uh, eight so that's, that's some tips on looking that up. Hopefully you enjoyed the video so far. If you want to support us a little bit, you can use our Rocky Mountain link. You can click from the description below from our website or link tree, any of that kind of stuff. They have all the dirt bike parts you need. Enjoy the rest of the video right now. Okay, so as most of you know, you're gonna go in a cross pattern. And, and the book will show you which one, but you can go here to here, and then here to here, here to here. And I like to work my way around. And ideally, you'd probably set this like at 16 or 17, go all the way around, and then go up to 20, and go all the way around to take your time. So it's all good and tight right now. So the kind of, the only tougher thing, that doesn't taste good, by the way. Probably not. Put a little bit of that on there, and I can get this to start. It's a little tight quarters in here, but there it goes. And then I can do the same thing on this side. And I make sure to leave my clamps on and I'm gonna be able to position them to tighten them up. Okay, so good and snug. You don't wanna over tighten these. And that's why I like to use a nut driver. This is a six millimeter nut driver when you tighten these down. Just get them good and snug, just like that. Okay, so then it good, good and snug on the top one here. Pretty simple project here. I'm gonna plug in our sensor back in. We got our electrical plug. Let's get that plugged back in. I might think routing's gonna be over here. Again, we should always take a video of the routing before you start. So it's a good idea. This bike's got 31 hours, I think we said. 32. 32. So we're gonna put a new spark plug in. We got a new BR7ES. That's what was in it. I'm assuming that's stock. I don't think there's any reason 
our guy would have changed it. Good and snug right there. Now tight, tighten it down. This thing might be difficult to get off and on when you're in the wild. So hopefully we don't have any fouled plugs happening. I'm gonna make sure it's good. You feel it clicking right there, just like so. We're just reusing our coolant that was stock. It's very clear, but it is kind of oily when you touch it. So it does have something in it. Had us a bit worried. This is our second one of these bikes we've worked on on the engine. About time to burp it over. These bikes do have a bleeder. You can do the bleeder off the head. So here's the bleeder right here. You can do that. I think I'm just a little too lazy and it's easier just to whip the bike over. So this is the new cap that's got a plastic head to it. And it's, it's pretty uh, hard to get off and on the bike, especially with the tank on. You have to put pressure like that. So when the tank's on and in the way, you need a special tool. This is the tool to remove it when you have the shrouds on tank on. You can push down and turn it. Uh, Bulletproof makes this one. There's a few other guys making them as well. So it just slips on like that to, to get this thing loose. You don't need to tighten it with it. I think people could maybe do more damage. So when you, you know, with your hand, you can just get it started and push down just like that. Okay, so anybody that's paying attention that has one of these bikes knows this bike doesn't come with a fan unless you get the super hard enduro version. So we added the Trail Tech fan to this model. Okay, so we're not throwing the tank away, but when you store a tank uh, and you're, while you're working, it's nice to put it somewhere where you're not gonna get any fuel lines damaged or anything like that. So finding something like a trash can to sit it on is, it can be a good, a good thing to do. Each of these bikes has a little trick on feeding the fuel line through. I think it looks like we've only worked on a couple of these bikes, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a few. So we're gonna plug in the electrical and you wanna hear it snap. You don't wanna to pull too hard on this tab, they break off. I, I know that, don't ask how I know. <laughs> Just like that, make sure it's good and snug. I've also heard stories guys breaking this. Um, so we wanna be careful of that if it breaks, it's gonna break your entire fuel pump. A Little bit of grease on the O-ring helps. Also, it's, it's a good time to put a new fuel filter in. Here's our new filter in my hand. And people ask, how can you tell if this one's bad? Well, you can't until it's kind of too late. So you just pull it off. People go, oh, it doesn't look that dirty. Well, you just put a new one in. Spencer thought we blew up a four-stroke once. The one that just died on him for no reason. Just He was riding up in the mountains and it just, boom, just died. And that's all it was. We just swapped that out and it solved it. And he was like, oh, awesome. Okay, so now when you put this on, you don't have a lot of room. This can be a little tricky. And you're going to want to hear it click and then pull back and forth. Very nice. So we're on. I didn't get that loud click but because I was holding the button down when I went on. Yep. So I'm going to let it loose and then there it goes. There's that click. Okay. And you want to pull back and forth. Make sure you're fully engaged. I like to use a nut driver so I can get a good straight shot and I get a good angle because a lot of people strip out those kind of bolts. Use a nut driver first and I go around and I get the tank all secure and then go around with a T-handle and snug them all up to finish. out oh yeah <laughs> so that's our next step uh we're gonna let it uh idle a little bit more just here for a second guys uh are over paranoid about breaking things in don't let your bike sit there and idle for five minutes you know let it idle for 45 seconds to a minute and then ride it around at slow i call it pit speeds if you're at the track just in the pits just slow speeds and then you can go get on it after a few minutes <laughs> No dyno, but my eyes are a watering. So with the map that Jamie's got in here, this thing definitely now has more pull on top that it just didn't have before. Still feels great at the low trail speeds, but then the wide open, I think it's better. So 
We're looking forward to getting this thing on the trail. I think the added compression is what this thing needed. Still can run pump gas, which is really cool. So it's not like it's anything crazy. So I think this is the lowest cost deal for you. If you have an XCW and these new generation ones, just adding compression and a remap from someone like Jamie at Twisted, it's gonna help this thing a ton. Okay, so on the trail, it's as good or better than it was in the field by the house. So pretty dang good, really fun. Uh, we had a good time. Uh, Spencer rode it a bunch, I rode it a bunch, hopping off and on four strokes. <laughs> We are mainly four stroke guys because we motocross four strokes. Motocrossing a two stroke is really difficult. You have to be a lot better skill set than I have. So for me on the trail, this thing is, is really good. I'm on the fence back and forth about where I like this better and where I'd prefer a 350. So really fun bike. These mods have made a big difference in this bike and I'm going to be building my own TE 300, which is basically the same bike, but the Husky version with a linkage that's a little bit shorter because the linkage just sits down about an inch shorter in this, which is gonna be nice for those that are challenged here like myself. So looking forward to that build coming soon. We'll have the TE 300 version. We're gonna get a few more mods done and I think it should be a really fun. We're gonna test a few other things out that I have some ideas on. Really fun bike. <laughs> Really fun, uh, you know, tweaking on this thing. We're looking forward to more content. We're gonna have some trail footage as well. So uh, if you like what we do, like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, make sure to send us, when I say send us, email me from our links uh, anywhere, any tech questions, things like that. And uh, we'll see you later on the track or trail. So green means go. We can tell ourselves that. That one's funner the other way because it's like a double. Or a little step up. If you're going fast enough, yes.